Welcome to another project with James. This is our project today. Now this is not normally the type of project that I do, but I'm so glad that I did because it turned out so great. This is an arched, distressed looking picture frame. It was really fun getting this wood looking old and weathered. I think it's something you're gonna love doing too. So without wasting any of your time, let me show you how you can make this. We're gonna start off using a piece of plywood. Now this is a really nicely sanded piece of plywood. It comes that way from the store. You can actually find these in the bins at the hardware stores pre-cut like this. You can tell how thin this is. It's a quarter inch thick. If you compare it to my thumb, you can tell how thin that is. We're gonna start with this first. We're going to cut the plywood to size. And the size that we need is one inch extended from all edges of the picture. You can move it all the way over to the edge Mark two inches, and then draw your line. There's a number of different ways you can cut this wood. If you have your own favorite way, by all means do it that way. I've chosen to use a circular saw because I think it's the quick and easiest. And what I've done is clamped a piece of wood right here on the side to act as a guard so I get that cut nice and straight. I went down to my home improvement store. I chose some hardwood door casings to use in this picture frame. They have rows and rows of them. Just choose whatever you like the best. This is the one that I happen to choose. Measure your casing. Whatever your measurement happens to be, I want you to add one inch to it. Then we're going to go around each side and measure whatever your measurement is, make your mark. We're going to draw straight lines on those marks on four of the sides. Drawing out the arch is pretty simple. Find the halfway point of your wood down here. I can't tell you what that's gonna be because it might be different than mine. And then find your halfway point on the line you've drawn here and make a mark at both of those halfway points. And tie a string to the end of a pencil like that, right up close to the tip. And then we're gonna clamp that string right on the mark you made down here at the bottom. Now if you need to adjust it, adjust it so that the tip of the pencil is exactly on that mark that we made just a minute ago, right up here. Remember to keep your pencil straight up and down and keep the line tight and just kind of lightly draw your arch. We're going to drill holes in the corners of the shape that we're going to be cutting out. As you're drilling the hole right here, do not let the hole cross the line. We're going to set up the guide again so that our saw can cut nice and straight. You can clamp another guide on this side so that the saw fits perfectly right down the middle. It's as easy as that. Now we're going to do that exact same thing on the other two straight sides. Before we cut the arch, let's cut a straight line from this hole to this hole just so we have less wood we have to deal with as we're cutting our arch. We don't have any guides here. We're doing this all freehand, so take your time. Let's smooth up these edges a little bit by sanding them. I like to use a sanding sponge. Feel free to use an electric sander. Just make sure you have a fine grit sandpaper on there. As you move to each corner, if it needs to be cleaned out a little bit, just grab a knife and clean it out a little bit. So this is the inside of our picture frame. I've shaped it with an arch, but remember, if you don't want an arch, that's cool. Just cut it square and you're ready to go. Now this piece is ready to move on like this, but I think I'm gonna do one thing more just to give it that little zing. I'm going to router the inside edges of this shape here. Now if you don't have a router or if you don't want a router, that's completely fine. You can move on just like this but I'm going to go ahead and router it right now. Now let's cut the trim to go around the frame. Take a measurement from this point on your plywood to this point on your plywood, and then add an extra half inch because we want the trim to hang over the edge of the plywood just a little bit. 
We're going to make this angle cut on the miter saw and notice that we've got it set to 45 degrees. Once you've made your first cut, you're going to measure from the long end of the cut and use the measurement that you took from the plywood and make a mark. Because we're cutting at the opposite angle, you need to turn the saw to the other 45 degrees, bring the trim down to your mark, line up the blade with the mark, and make your cut. Now do that exact same thing for the other sides. After you know that you've cut all these correctly because you've placed them on top and they fit just right, now we're gonna fasten them together. First, we're going to put a little bit of glue on these. Remember, when you're gluing, a tiny bit is all you need. You do not need very much at all. Then place the two corners together. Now what you're going to do is take a block that you know is perfectly square, put it right in that corner, then we're going to clamp it. And you don't need to do it very tight. And clamp it from this way. That will hold that corner nice and tight, but we're also going to put some brad nails in there. Now a brad nail is a tiny little nail. It just will hold that together so that we can move on to the other corners. Now it's time to attach the trim part of the frame to the plywood part of the frame. To do that, we're gonna flip the whole thing over and attach it from the back. Once again, we're going to use a brad nailer to tack this together. It's really important that the nails you choose are short enough that they are not going to penetrate all the way through the frame and come out the front. That'd be a disaster. So these ones happen to be 5 8 inches. We want to clamp it so it's nice and tight when we nail it together. So this is looking really good. There's just one thing I don't like about it right now, and that's when you look on the side, you can see this little piece of plywood. It just doesn't feel finished to me. So what we're going to do is take a little piece of chair rail, and you can find these at the home improvement store right next to the trim in the aisle. And we're going to attach this right along the edge, just like this. That gives it some thickness and it finishes it nicely. We're going to cut this the same way we cut this other trim. We're going to take the measurements from here to here, cut it at a 45. The only difference is, Instead of laying it on the saw flat like this, we're gonna stand it up on the saw like this. When you're confident that it all fits perfectly, now we're going to attach it. And once again, we're going to glue it. Now we're using just standard wood glue here. This happens to be a Gorilla brand, but you can use whatever brand you like. Once again, we're going to tack this with the little 5 8 inch brad nails. Now what we need to do is fill in these little holes that we just made with the nails with some wood putty. Now make sure your wood putty is stainable. Then just get a little bit on your finger, put it in the hole, and wipe it off like that. It's pretty slick. Doesn't take much. We've assembled the frame. It's nice and sturdy. That's what it looks like from the back. We've shaped it. Now it's time to decide what do you want it to actually look like. There's so many different things you can do to this frame. You can stain it, you can paint it, you can get crafty. I've played around with a couple different colors of stain. I've considered doing a clean, shiny wood look. But after considering where I'm gonna hang it and the furniture it's going to be around and getting some opinions from some family members, I've decided to do something a little bit differently, and you guys already know this because you've seen it, but I'm going to do more of a distressed, darker, weathered looking wood. And this wood is pretty new, pretty pristine, but it doesn't take a whole lot to make this wood look like it's been sitting out in the weather for a couple of years, so that's what we're going to do right now. The first thing I'm going to use is this wire brush that attaches to the end of a drill. It's not very expensive, it's a couple of bucks at your home improvement store. It makes things way faster and easier if you want to use that. If you don't, you could always just use a wire brush. It just takes a lot longer. You 
You can see how that brought out that grain, made those cross marks as if it's been sitting out in the weather. So the next thing I'm going to use is this rotary tool with a little grinder on the end. We're going to use that to just put some scrapes in the wood. Now if you don't have one of these, that's okay. You can just use a scratch awl or a screwdriver or anything that'll put scrapes in the wood. So now we're going to take a scratch awl and we're just going to poke holes using a hammer to make it look like those little worm holes that you find in the wood that's been weathered outside. If you don't have a scratch awl, you can just use a nail, anything really that'll poke a hole. Just get any remaining dust off, use a slightly wet rag, and then we're going to be ready to stain this thing. This right here will make your life a little easier. Grab a couple pieces of scrap wood, stick some screws in it, and it will hold it up off the table for you. The color I'm using is called espresso. It comes out really dark, which is exactly what I wanted. You can use whatever color or brand that you like. I'm going to spray the clear coat on. I'd rather spray it than brush it just because it's way easier and there's less cleanup and less drips you have to deal with. Now most of the time when you're permanently putting a print into a frame, you use the brown tape and then you put the brown paper over the back. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm pretty sure that in the near future I'm going to want to change out this print. So I'm just going to use some frog tape. This is just a variation on masking tape. You can find these little picture hanging kits at any home improvement store or wherever, but they come with just the little ring, the little screws, and the wire to string across. And this is really simple. We're just going to use a screwdriver and use these little screws and attach that just right there. So the trick is to stick it through the ring once, loop it around itself one time like this, and then shove it back through the ring. Like that. Then you can just twist it around itself. It's time to go hang this up, but before I do, I want to say thank you so much for following along with me today. This project turned out so great. My next few projects are going to be really cool too, so come check those out. So thanks again, and we will see you on the next project with James.